Hey guys, YouTubies, Steve-O here. I'm out in the patch here. I told you guys I'd show you a little harvesting action on dragon tongues. That's what I'm getting. I get them while they're young like this and I saute them with a little garlic and uh, onion, olive oil and butter all mixed. So that's what we got going on here. Here's one that's, uh, here's one close enough. I mean, it's not really big yet, but they're nice and tender like that. Uh, and they kind of blend in. You gotta really watch for them. Here's one that's not ready. I just got a small patch you can see. I got some over there, some over here. I got some sweet potatoes I put in. Oh, they haven't popped up yet. There's a celery. Uh, there's that celery I did, and it's getting a little burned. It's getting hot here. It gets, it's 10,000 degrees here in Florida. But anyway, I came and cut off. I came and cut off this uh, one celery here. And look at it's already popping back up through. Uh, yeah, it's uh, coming along. Another cool thing about chicken tractors in your little plot, if you design your chicken tractor to go right up these beds, all my tomatoes that are getting on the, on the you know on the going bad side, I throw in for the chickens, so they uh, eat to eat the tomatoes, poop out the seeds, and then they rototill them right in your garden for you. And guess what you're getting? Volunteer tomatoes all through here. So I've been taking them out. The friend, uh, good friend Jaime next door. Uh, he's been coming over, getting some, and he's getting ton. He's putting in tons of veggies. So him and I are comparing notes on natural farming methods. And I'm pretty much convinced this Korean. Uh, this Korean method of farming is the way to go. I really am. It's it's amazing. Uh, you can work. It's because it's called natural natural farming methods. We talked about on a video recently. Uh, this Chris Trump guy, and I didn't know it. Uh, uh, Jaime's whole family they're they're from the Philippines, and they prac they've been practicing this system too. And I don't know how many years. I forgot to ask him, but uh, they they do this method and uh, with excellent results. He's got a food forest going on over here. It's just beautiful. He's got it really going. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's uh, going to get enough here. Mama's going to saute him up. She's going to get the garlic and... Uh, onion saute these things up you really got to watch close because they're all like camouflaged camouflaged in here these things exploded here the last 24 hours we had a three in three inch rain hit us last night three inches of rain i mean it it came down yeah this is like a little easter egg hunt looking for these things i mean they're all they're all hidden up in here and uh, so you just keep you come out you just keep coming out and uh, harvesting uh, you let them go and this can turn into a hard bean if you want a hard bean let them go if you want seed these are all this is all I don't have I was gonna fill up the bed but I ran out of seed and the deal is to plant them I believe it's one inch deep four inches apart one seed and I pre-soaked these seeds. So here's a nice long one. I pre-soaked my seed uh, the night before. And uh, also I throw in, I, I, I sprout, for the chickens, I sprout uh, sunflowers. And guess what, that's what that is. That's one they missed, there's, there's a lot of them in here. And I usually feed them back to the girls, they eat them right up. Uh, but they miss some. And so, yeah, 
this is coming along nice I'm telling you this is uh, gonna be a nice little harvest now you can come out here every few days and pick these things and as soon as yeah, as soon as the uh, you know these burn out see there's a nice nice volunteer tomato right there now what I'll do if I want more I've got quite a few cook going here now there's another one here I mean they're all over the place but what I do is I strip the leaves all down I pinch all these leaves off right on down matter of fact I'll even take that one see this sucker that's the other thing I do with tomatoes I take the sucker out get rid of them you'll produce more and so you pick this all the way out then you dig down put some rubber gloves on and get right down in this is that biochar I've got my whole beds full of this stuff I dig right on down deep and get that root out then when I pot it up I bury it all the way up to here with dirt that's nothing new for you guys that have done tomatoes but uh, anyway that's what I've been doing see see these are see the size of that guy right there that's beautiful and all you do is you go in and you pinch off this end that's it you wash them up and then you snap them they snap real easy just like that and that size there is what I'm putting in to saute up these things are excellent loaded with fiber and a very good very good crop to put in so if you guys have never done dragons dragon tongues give it a shot because I think you're gonna like it and uh, cassava you can see the cassava is coming along real nice those are spoiled rotten little chicken girls right there so these cassavas are doing nice I'm gonna go over here and check and see if I've got any uh, see if I've got any over here beans over here that are ready I wanted to show you too my uh, little update on the dandelions so here's some more of the uh, of these uh, they didn't get they didn't eat the seed yeah there's a few in here this was planted at a later date over here they're starting to produce these are going to be coming along fine I'll be eating, I'll be eating dragon tongues for a while and uh, which is a good thing like I said a good fiber source and uh, I'm missing some here they're easy to miss I mean they, they blend right in you know this little bitty plant puts out a lot of food and you can see there's more blooms coming here you got more blooms coming in here so it's gonna keep going to keep kicking them out I'm going to take these sunflowers over and give to the chickens they love them yeah I tried uh, letting some go and I boiled some up the soup that works too but uh, actually I like them better if you just saute them up you know all right let's give these two little stalks to the girls here they'll like that they'll eat these sunflowers up I sprout sunflowers for these guys. I put them in a quart jar and I sprout them. Soak them overnight and just take a wide mouth quart jar. Melt some holes in it. Oh, that's nice. They put a nice egg on the outside of the nest box. Now I can get to dig that out. But, uh, yeah. Let's see if they got anything inside here. Probably got a girl sitting on eggs here. Yeah, there's one sitting here. Come out of here, goofball. 
Get out of here, goofball. Maybe there were so many eggs in here, they didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't get them yesterday because we had that three. I was out of town and I had the three inch rain, so I didn't even come out here yesterday. So, yeah. Protein and fiber, oh, you gotta love it. Now, over here. Go by the beehives. Let's go by the Twisted Sisters and see how they're doing. Popping a camera out here. Pretty warm, they're pretty active. Give you a shot here, the bees, the girls coming in. The girls coming out, you can see they, uh, they're coming in there. The pollen. Watch there, you can see the pollen on their legs. I saw one just I set the camera down. They're coming over looking that camera over. Going, should, should we attack this or what? There's one. You see it just came in, a yellow pollen. We got we got the uh, the girls are uh, going to get testy there. You know this stuff guys, this uh this stuff I'm putting on here, Tanglefoot. I thought this thing would be loaded with with bees because this is basically my first year using Tanglefoot. The only the only downside is you get you get some dust. You get a a leaf here and there. You got to take that off. But I have had no problems with ants on this thing at all. None. Yeah. This is the, this is the, the, the mean little girls here. You see how they jumped on that camera? They jumped right on that camera. They said, huh, it's not moving around. Should we kill it? No, oh, they're, they're coming along fine. Okay. Give you a quick tour over here. We got bullfrogs now. They're starting to come out. See them moving around. We got bullfrogs. The tadpoles I threw in here. Bullfrog tadpoles. And they're all morphing now. Now it's spring. They're morphing. I come out here in the evening. Probably a dozen small bullfrogs. But I've got the, the horned owls here. I think they like the, like those. Uh, the I'm getting a, 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 a fish dying here and there. I, I do every year. It's not that big a deal. Uh, small tilapia. Uh, no problem. We're going to do here. Neighbor, good neighbor Jaime gave me taro root. I got two. He gave me four. Nice. They're coming up already. So what I'm going to do here. Bury that fish. Okay. Nothing's wasted on Steve-O's farm. I see another little bitty one over there. You get that in the heat of the summer. Uh, not that hot yet. But I've been pumping a lot of water. Maybe this change of the water here has got them going on. It's only... Heck, this water's only 72 degrees, so that's not bad. 78's the magic number on tilapia for breeding. Catfish, too, pretty much. And, uh, got some big ones in here. Can't see them. They're down in there. I saw one right here the other day. She was, she was, uh, they stand right on their head and swim around and blow a hole, clean it out. You'll see a nice sandy spot there. Here's one of those, this is one of those uh, volunteer tomatoes going. I've got more of the longevity spinach cuttings. These are going, this one is just starting out of the bottom. These are all nice. Uh, Jaime just gave me some fish meal. I put that on there. It's, a, it's fish with uh, molasses. So, uh, yeah. And uh, this is... Uh, some tomatoes here going. Uh, all volunteer tomatoes. It's coming right on up, all the way up, fruiting all the way up. And like I said, just keep pinching out these little suckers right in the crotch. There's another one there, over there. So yeah, 
uh, these actually, I start picking these off at this point because what we get here is stink bugs and they burrow a hole in and then back their butt in and put a, put an egg in and now uh, you're going to have a rotten tomato in no time. So what you do, you come through, you pick these little guys out, you'll see a real small hole and uh, and that's what happens. This is, you know, if I'm in dapple light here, these should be, uh, I'm going to get this one too. Dapple light, uh, you shouldn't be too bad, but they can't take this Florida heat. They just can't take this heat. So we're getting a variety pack in our little harvest deal. Uh, this bin, I had a problem. I've got two kinds of rabbits here. I've got the cottontail and I've got the marsh rabbit. And the marsh rabbits were having way too much fun here. They were getting inside my bins. This particular one, I didn't individually seed this. I just did seeding all over and sprinkled dirt on. And this is the cluster mess I have here. I'm just going to, let's experiment. Here and here. Now, they got in. You can see where they chewed them up, the rabbits. They, they're, they're coming back. They'll come back. They didn't kill them. These, these dandelions are pretty tough dudes. Yeah, pretty tough guys. They'll come back. But I had to get the chicken wire on here. These are the uh, tractor supply rods. And I just zip tied it. Very quick, easy. Pineapple farming a little bit here. A little shot of that. This is, all these came from last year's harvest of my uh, pineapples. And uh, when I first got here, I planted them all along the, the whole north property line. And I put in about 150. But I was trading a girl for the uh, tops down there at the produce place. And uh, I asked her, do you like honey? She said, oh, I love honey. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll trade you honey for tops. So she was giving me a call about every other day. Come down and get the tops. Oh, yeah, bring me some honey. So I was going back, dropping off pound jars of honey and picking up these things. And uh, there is a really nice one right there. But it, this is a long-term thing. And you can jam them in like this. Uh, here's one I just put in the other day. And you can see it's burnt a little. But it's coming back. It's, it's, it, these, things, these things are easy. You just, uh, when you cut the top off, cut all the fruit off, and then leave a little the nub at the bottom and then pull off about oh, four or five rows of leaves. And I leave it in the utility room for uh, 24 hours and let it kind of callous over. And then I shove it in the dirt. That's it. That's as tough as it gets. Now we're going to be doing some experimenting. I'll keep you up on that with the natural farming methods on this stuff. Okay, so that's a little update on that. And... Uh, let me give you a quick tour over to my pineapple patch. Might as well give you the tour of the my mini farm here while we're at it. I've got actually a couple more things I want to show you. This is my little one little mini patch of pineapples I got. This is this year's bunch. This is coming along. Okay, this thing will get pretty big. The first year they weren't that big. But see, I will harvest all these tops and they're going back in the dirt. In three years, I got pineapples. There's another one. I harvested out of this little circle last year 15 pineapples. It don't look to me like I'm going to get that many this year. Like here's one here, nothing. There's one here hiding. There's one there, here's one here hiding, here's another one, and uh, yeah, there, there's a few more in there, there's one over there, there's a little guy there. So yeah, we're going to have some more. This thing I can see is going to turn into a, uh, you know, like the honeybees, it turns into a monster. These here, there's another one. I have some more here around that they love. This direction here is west. 
And for I've, I've experimented with these things on different spots. They like dapple light. This is dapple light. And uh, these, the majority of these are on the west side of this tree. But I could ring this side, which I will do, and get them all in here. I'm going to load this whole thing up. Up here. Whoa, what is that? You remember the paper log and chicken soup thing? That is a catch beehive now that I've not caught anything yet. All right. Over here is another one. That's made with a five gallon bucket. I did spray some paint on it. Inside that bucket, I drilled a hole in the bottom with that two and three quarter bit. I put some eighth screen in the bottom. I took one by or two by stock and cut quarter inch strips. It's quarter inch strips. And I hot glued them on the floor of that bucket. And then I, I hot glued strips going all the way to the top of the bucket. Then I took, I made on the inside three bamboo shoots that come across toward the top. And I honey, and I beeswaxed them in. I secured them in with hot glue. Theory is here, if I catch a swan, and I threw a lemongrass lure in there. Now, I can lower this with this system, and this is, you know, you're not hurting the tree here. I put this choker on here with the hook. I stole these hooks off of those Harbor Freight strap, ratchet straps. That's where I get these hooks. So I did this. I threw a rope over that limb, and, and, I, and I, I got a ring up there on that. There's a ring up there, and that uses it like a pulley. It's a slipper. You know, you slide it through, and you just hoist it up. So I can let this, I can let this, got a nice invasive vine here. So I can let this bucket down and relure it very easily. Now over here is another one of these crazy contraptions of mine. All this is, I'm going to flip this over and hopefully... I don't get attacked by hornets. Uh, hopefully the hornets haven't moved into this. Hang on. Aha, nothing's happened. All right, here's what's... I just shoved these bamboo skewers through here. I've got a hole here for the bees can come in. This is just a simple experimental swarm trap. That's all this is, it's cheap. I took half by half wire made a easy simple cage I left extra at the top domed it over put it all together with zip ties and the inside here I put bamboo split bamboo and put in here and then beeswaxed it I also slopped beeswax on the inside of this thing so that's that uh, little deal then I put I let this thing sit for like two months in the barn and just kind of steam out until it was dry. And then I put valve spar paint on there. Two coats of that valve spar exterior paint. This thing is staying together. This thing's been out here for a whole year. It has not deteriorated. Okay. Uh, I want to show you one of the best honey crops in the fall in Florida. This is actually an invasive tree. Um, it's called the Brazilian pepper. And this thing, I just volunteer. What happens, They, this all over my neighborhood. State's trying to eradicate it. Yeah, good luck with that one. Here's some flowers, real small flowers on it. Uh, those are male flowers, by the way. The females don't pop until September, about September 15th. This particular plant is a main honey crop for beekeepers in Florida, that and the Metaluca. South Florida's got Metaluca. But this tree is one, this is about a guaranteed crop. I, I would go back in the day, I was going clear to Northport and Port Charlotte. I had some Amish people that let me camp out down there and put my bees in. I'd run 250 colonies down there and I'd about guaranteed 100 pounds of honey per hive with this tree.
So yeah, and I like the I like the flavor of it. It's it's a this you know you see this stuff called the orange blossom honey in the store. You you hold it up, it's amber color. They have cut they have blended that. Uh, orange blossom honey is water white. It looks like carol syrup. They mix it with this tree honey here, and they call it orange blossom. Okay. So there's a nice little beekeeper trick for you. This plant over here, I want you to... Sh this plant here, actually, I planted these. And I do wildcraft some of this. Hopefully this year, we can wildcraft some of this. But I don't see any of this blooming this year. Uh, so, but this plant here now, I tried for years, about six, eight years. And... Uh, I thought, what the heck is going on here? This this is not it's not blooming. Uh, I've had some deer come in here. They like to chew the tops on these. See those little rounded off? They're supposed to look like this point that they came in here and nibbled these little fresh shoots. But uh, yeah, this thing grows. This is a very slow growing plant. One of our main plants in Florida for honey. This is an excellent honey plant. Uh, called saw palmetto and it's got a gets a saw edge on it. it it'll cut it'll cut you real nice yeah I keep it trimmed back and then I mulch it here just a little you know just a little centerpiece around I got the bluebirds coming in here there's a girl in there they're going the second round now of babies in this uh, in this box here second round and there are the eggs five five eggs one year I had them do uh, three rounds three rounds of babies yeah so let's not uh, we won't play with those girls anymore uh, I'm trying my hand at grafting too I don't think this is going to work. I'm going to leave it just for fun and try later. But it's come. this is a mulberry that never did do much of anything. And since I cut it off, uh, I've been studying more grafting details. I did this totally wrong. This is coming apart. I'm going to do a new saw cut here and, and, and graft. i got to talk to my main man, Pete, and, and get fine-tuned on that. But I want to graft some Pakistani on that uh, stub there. I've got another one way, way over there. I want to do the same thing. I want to get these changed over to Pakistani. But uh, back to these. This thing here, uh, I've got wild hogs, coyotes, and deer. And the deer and, coyote, uh, deer and coyotes come out in the middle of the road. Raccoons do too. Uh, they poop the seeds in the middle of the road. Lime Rock Road's up there. And those seeds... What I would do is take a, a plastic uh, quart bag and go up to the pile, turn the bag inside out, and go right over those. The seeds stay intact. They go right through the digestive tract. But they said these germinate like 90% or 100% if they pass through a gut tract of an animal. That's how all of these happened. They came through the rear end of a coyote. Yes, sir. That's how that happened. I tried for years just pulling them seed, letting them dry, planting them. Never could get them to go. Pass them through a coyote's rear end, and you got it going on. Now, right here is a brand new fresh stalk coming out. Matter of fact, this one may be a flower pod. We'll have to check and wait and see on that. Okay? So there's your mini tour, guys, of the day. Uh, get back with you uh, another time. Keep you keep you updated on my happenings around the farm here. Uh, Steve-O checking out. Thanks for stopping in, and be happy. Bye-bye.